Hello from a slightly stormy and rainy Kampala in Uganda today. Thank you so much for joining me for a few thoughts from the Bible. It's great to have you here. I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you've needed to move house, but it feels like there are so many different details that you need to hold on to when you're in that position. What to pack, what to sell, what to get rid of, what the new house will be like, how you'll be leaving the old house. There are many, many different things to be thinking about. And you don't want to forget anything. You don't want anything to slip through your fingers and suddenly become a problem on that moving day. Well, I have a big move coming up from Uganda to Liberia. And doing that in the middle of a pandemic as well adds quite a few extra complexities, extra details. I feel a bit like I'm, I'm juggling a hundred balls at the moment and trying to keep them all in my mind so that I don't let anything drop and everything gets organized that needs to get organized. But you know, it's not just in the big things in our lives. It's not just in the, the massive events like moving house that we have details that we end up feeling concerned about. It can happen in day-to-day -day life as well a project at work or looking after the house and trying to make sure there's dinner on the table and the shopping is done or planning anything right now in this COVID time adds extra details and extra complexity, I feel. So what is absolutely so reassuring to know is that God cares about the details. I was reminded of this recently as I read through the book of Two Kings in the Bible. So to, to set the scene, Elisha, the prophet in the Old Testament, he meets a, a rather wealthy woman who sets up a, a nice little hut for him on the roof of her house, a place for him to stay whenever he passes by and she feeds him and looks after him. And it's, it's a great story. This woman isn't able to have a child and so Elisha intervenes and she ends up having a son. And later when that son gets sick, and actually dies, Elisha's prayers bring that boy back to life. Well, God brings that boy back to life on and answering Elisha's prayers. It's a wonderful story. And later on in it, Elisha tells this woman that she needs to leave Israel for seven years because a famine was coming. And so off she goes with her family and she lives with the Philistines for seven years before returning to Israel. Now I can imagine on her return how many details <laughs> would have been in her mind. What's the house going to be like after seven years? What about my land? Will I be able to get that back? Are my friends and my more distant family members, are they even still alive after this long famine? What does the country look like now? How are we going to cope? We've gone from being this wealthy and affluent family. Are we, are we coming home now as paupers? It would have been so, so easy for her to feel utterly overwhelmed, to feel lost, to feel that she had no idea how she was going to cope and what was going to happen in all of those little details. And yet this is what happens in 2 Kings chapter 8 verses 3 to 6. At the end of the seven years she came back from the land of the Philistines and went to appeal to the king for her house and land. The king was talking to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, the servant of Elisha, and had said, tell me about all the great things Elisha has done. Just as Gehazi was, te was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elisha had brought back to life came to appeal to the king for her house and land. Gehazi said, this is the woman, my lord, the king, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. The king asked the woman about it and she told him. Then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, give back everything that belonged to her, including all the income from her land from the day she left the country until now. In one fell swoop, 
every single one of those details was catered for. It's so easy to think that the, the little things in our lives are sort of beneath the notice of God, you know, that they're a little bit too insignificant for God to care about. Like he might be interested in, in the big deals, right? But, but the little things, you know, not so much, right? He's a busy God. He's got lots of things to, to be thinking about. But that is simply not true. God is in the details. God cares about everything that is going on in your life, from the enormous things to the teeny, tiny, tiny little details. And more than that, he goes above and beyond. All this woman wanted was her house back and maybe her land so that she could have an income again. But instead, God goes above and beyond and she is granted all of the income that that land made for the last seven years. That was beyond what she was expecting. It was beyond what she was imagining or hoping for. And it is incredible the way that God brought it about. You know, just at that moment when Gehazi was speaking to the king, just so happened to be speaking about that particular woman, that's when she walked in. And even beyond that, this was a situation that should not have happened. If you read earlier in 2 Kings, you learn that Gehazi had leprosy, a condition that would have made him a social outcast, a condition that would certainly have prevented him from having a one-to-one -one audience with the king of Israel, and yet God made it happen. We don't know if Gehazi had been miraculously healed. We don't know if the king had just said, I don't care about that. I want to hear stories about Elisha. We don't know what the situation was, but we do know that that moment where Gehazi was with the king and the woman just happened to walk in was absolutely incredible. It should have been impossible. And yet with God, Nothing is impossible. Not only does God care about every little detail in your life, but he will do the impossible to have things work out for your good. That is a wonderful, wonderful thing to remember. Every time it feels like the details are getting a little bit too much, when it feels like your circumstances are a little bit beyond you, remember that. God cares about those things that are happening in your life and he will do the impossible to smooth out the mountains, to smooth the rough patches, to make a way for you. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'll be back on Friday next week with another video and another thought from the Bible. So I will see you then.